not too long ago, we took a look at a really amazing IPS mod for the Game Boy Color. Dubbed the Q5 IPS kit, there was a lot to like about it. From its larger LCD display to some of its integrated features such as pixel mode. However, there now seems to be an updated version of this kit from Funny Playing which integrates more features, including one that totally blew me away. Is this new upgraded IPS kit the new must-have screen mod for the Game Boy Color? Let's find out. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today I'm going to share with you a Game Boy Color backlight mod that honestly surprised me. This is the new version 2.0 Q5 IPS mod from Funny Playing. Now you may be asking, why did this new kit surprise me? Well, to be honest, I really didn't research this updated mod ahead of time, and as I was reading through the Funny Playing product page, it discussed a really cool feature which I had no idea it came with. It features an illuminated Game Boy Color logo, which I think could have some very interesting implications moving forward. Although it is a purely aesthetic feature, I think it's simply awesome and one of my favorite things about this mod. Now, before I found out about that particular feature, the real selling point for me was the fact that it incorporated a pre-laminated IPS panel. This does three important things. First, you get a perfectly centered image without the need of a 3D printed bracket. It also ensures that there will never be any dust that gets between the screen lens and the LCD, which is fantastic. And lastly, it greatly reduces the difficulty of the mod. However, there is a small caveat. In order to take full advantage of this kit and simplify the installation process, you need to also purchase the custom Funny Playing shell which was specifically designed to work with this laminated IPS screen. Otherwise, you'll have to modify your own shell which will be quite challenging to do. But I'll get into all those details later in the video. Anywho, if you enjoy learning about mods like this, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for plenty more weekly mod videos just like this one. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to start off by showing you what's included in this new IPS kit. Then I'll demonstrate how to install it using the custom Funny Playing shell, discuss the key features of this mod, go over the pros and cons, and of course provide you all with my overall thoughts. Now since I don't have a donor Game Boy Color, I'll be using this one, which I modified a while ago using the Benven Aeoli LCD mod. This is a great drop-in option, and if you're interested, you can check out that video, which I'll have linked in the video description. Now, the first thing included in this kit is the laminated IPS panel. As you can see, the screen lens is already adhered to the IPS panel, which has numerous benefits that I'll be going over later in the video. This here is the ribbon cable, which converts the Game Boy Color's video signal into something that the IPS panel can understand. This looks very similar to many of the ribbon cables we've seen for some time now. The kit also includes a touch sensor, as well as some wires which we'll need to make a few connections. And lastly, you get some insulating film to adhere to the rear of the IPS panel in order to prevent any potential shorts. Now I'll also be using this custom shell from Funny Playing, which was specifically designed for this IPS kit. I highly recommend that you pick one of these up if you're planning to do this mod. It'll make the process significantly easier. And lastly, I'll also be using these Funny Playing buttons and membranes. All right, now everything that I just showed you was very kindly donated to the channel by Retro Game Repair Shop. But rest assured, I'll be giving you my unbiased opinion of the mod later in the video. Now, after watching this video, if you find that you're interested in picking one of these kits up, Retro Game Repair Shop has generously provided a 10% discount on all of their products, including this one, if you use my link in the video description and use the coupon code TITO at checkout. That's T I. TO. Now this is an affiliate link so I will receive a small percentage commission for each sale completed. This is a great free way to support the channel and get a great deal on retro modding products at the same time. So again, big thank you to Retro Game Repair Shop. They offer a lot of great modding products so definitely check them out. Anyway, now that we've seen all the parts I'll be using for this project, 
let's start building this Game Boy Color. Getting right into it, first thing we need to do is remove all six triwing screws. With the console open, proceed to remove the three Phillips screws securing the motherboard. Delatch the LCD ribbon cable and then remove the motherboard. Great! Moving our attention to the funny playing shell, we need to slightly modify the start and select button openings. Unfortunately, they are too narrow and can't fit the button membranes and will need to be slightly widened using a small file. Carefully remove material and test fit the buttons frequently. Once they fit, we can now proceed to prep the IPS panel. First we want to apply the insulating film to the rear of the panel. Once that's done, peel off the release paper for the adhesive on both sides of the LCD assembly. Remove the LCD protective film and carefully install the IPS screen by placing the lower half into the shell like so, being cognizant of the LCD connector. Feel free to reapply the protective film. Now let's prep the ribbon cable. First, pre-tin the start and select pads shown here. Then solder the included wires to each. And then carefully connect the ribbon cable to the IPS panel as shown. Once connected, I use some Kapton tape to keep the ribbon cable from moving around. Go ahead and connect the LCD ribbon cable to the Game Boy Color motherboard and lock it in. Now before we install the motherboard, lay it flat adjacent to the shell so we can solder in the start and select wires. Pre-tin these vias shown here. Go ahead and solder a wire to the bottom one which is for the start button, and then solder the top one which is for select. And this is what the connection should look like. Great, now go ahead and install the buttons and membranes. Fold over the motherboard and secure it using the three Phillips screws. Okay, now solder a wire to the pin labeled C on the power switch which should be the third from the top. Then solder the other end of the wire to the pad labeled power on the ribbon cable. Now we're going to solder the touch sensor to the pad shown here. Solder it in a way so that it pushes the sensor towards the top of the shell. And if necessary, use some Kapton tape to secure it to the top. Great. Now install the power switch and IR cover, and then button up the console. Insert some batteries, your game of choice, and enjoy. I have to say, this is my absolute favorite IPS mod for the Game Boy Color. The pre-laminated screen and that awesome backlit logo really shine and make this an incredible package. Okay, let me give you a quick rundown of all the features this IPS kit offers. First, just like the original Q5 IPS kit, you get a 25% larger screen. It looks and works just as amazingly as its predecessor. The kit also features seven levels of brightness that you can toggle through. It will also retain your brightness setting even after turning off the console. To change the brightness, all you need to do is tap the touch sensor. Next, if you tap and hold the touch sensor, it will activate the various pixel grid and scan line modes. There are five different modes in total to choose from. Obviously, the default and first mode looks like this. No scan lines or a pixel grid overlay. This is my preferred mode of the five. The next three modes are what appear to be different variations of vertical scan lines. Going through them, you can see that the scan line thickness can be adjusted. And the last mode is the pixel grid overlay. This most closely resembles the original Game Boy Color's aesthetic and is my second favorite mode of the five. Next, pressing and holding start and select at the same time will allow you to adjust three different settings. The first adjustment you can do when the game portion of the Game Boy Color logo is illuminated will allow you to adjust the vertical orientation of the screen. Pressing start moves it up, and pressing select moves it down. Tapping the touch sensor toggles over to the next option denoted by the highlighted boy part of the Game Boy Color logo. This option allows you to adjust the horizontal orientation of the screen. Pressing start moves the screen to the right, while pressing select moves the screen to the left. 
tapping the touch sensor one more time allows you to adjust the color of the illuminated Game Boy Color logo. Pressing Start advances the color choices, while pressing Select allows you to go back to the previous color. There appears to be 26 colors to choose from, which is quite a few. To save your settings and exit the customizing mode, press and hold Start and Select until the Game Boy Color logo is fully illuminated. Great, so now that you have an idea of the features that this mod brings to the table, let's go over some of the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, first and foremost, this kit does not require any shell modding if you use the Funny Playing Shell, which I highly recommend. This gives you a professional, polished finish every time. It also makes the mod considerably easier. I also absolutely love the laminated screen. It's hard to explain, but the LCD sits right up against the glass, giving it a look similar to that of a smartphone screen. It looks very premium, especially when compared to the gap that exists on the original Q5 mod. Additionally, like I mentioned before, the laminated screen ensures that the image is centered and will essentially guarantee that there will never be any dust particles that would get in between the screen lens and the IPS panel, which is fantastic. However, my absolute favorite thing about this kit is the illuminated logo. It's something so simple, yet extremely impactful. Now, because this feature uses the extra screen real estate of the IPS panel to illuminate the Game Boy Color logo, how cool would it be if Funny Playing put in an animation behind the logo instead of just a static color? The possibilities are endless and very fun to think about. Now, this being the Q5 LCD display, another pro is the large screen, which looks absolutely incredible. And although the screen is centered already since it's laminated to the screen lens, you can still adjust the position to further fine tune its position. Amazing. And lastly, at roughly $50 for the IPS kit and $15 for the shell, this is a pretty good deal and extremely competitive with other kits currently on the market. Now, let's quickly go over the cons. I actually really couldn't come up with too many. This kit is near perfect. The screen and the shell are high quality and the display is absolutely gorgeous. I suppose the only real con is that there is soldering required, especially if you want all the features. And of course, there was the issue with the start and select buttons not fitting properly, which I hope Funny Playing can address in the near future, although it is fairly simple to fix if you have a filing kit. Regardless, installing the new Q5 IPS kit from Funny Playing has most certainly renewed this old Game Boy Color. So there you have it, the new Q5 IPS kit from Funny Playing. An amazing mod for your Game Boy Color console. As always, I'm curious about what you all think. Will any of you be installing this kit into your Game Boy Color? Definitely let me know by leaving a comment down below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.